Has he got? He's not so Ah, that took everything. That took everything. So here we are on the Manchester Marathon 2024 start line. I'm right at the front and I'm not feeling like the best version of myself. I was ill Friday, Saturday. I tried my best to feel as good as possible on that Sunday morning. It wasn't great and so I made a last effort to just force myself to feel good i swapped all of my gels out for caffeinated gels that's the main thing to take away here i went off plan and just chucked every single caffeine gel in i normally have three i alternate uh, non-caffeinated caffeinated i just went full seven caffeinated gels so throughout this race I i'm having a lot of caffeine uh, so bear that in mind but here we start right at the front i've got the four hour pace a lock behind me at the end of the day, that man needs to be behind me for me to achieve sub four. Straight into 5k pace. Weather conditions were fantastic, the best perhaps you could ask for. Maybe a little warm, but ultimately it was raining on Saturday. It's been raining on Monday and hailing. So the conditions on Sunday were as good as I could have hoped for. So fantastic there. And we go through the first 5k in 27.11. So we're bang on my pace that I've been training at. We're sticking to that. Uh, between like 5.25 and 5.30s, we're just ticking over very nicely. It does feel like a lot of effort considering I've, I'm supposed to be on tapered legs, but again, I'm very congested and uh, kind of battling that, and I was really in my own head from, from the get-go. So the next 5k is again pretty calm, the start of Manchester Marathon, pretty unsupported I suppose. There's a bit of buzz at the start, but then you're, you're kind of maneuvering around the city, uh, the outside of the city, going in towards the city centre, which at Deansgate is well supported. So there's a lot of, it's just very calm, it's quite good, you can lock into your pace, your heart rate doesn't get spiked by excitement, except at that point at like 7k. When you do go in the city center and you're also seeing the, the runners coming on the other opposite side, it is exciting and you can you can speed up a little bit too much there. But we were we were disciplined and the next 5k split came at 2720. So again, 530 pace, 5, 525, 530 pace. Between there, kept keeping it locked in and just focusing on moving those legs, keeping a turnover nice, and trying not to think about the fact that I feel like I was drowning in underwater. <laughs> Don't let him catch you, Mackie. Don't let him catch you. So here we're passing Manchester United Stadium. Again, not much support here because this is right next to the start line. So if you're in the area, you're probably at the start line because you get to see the start and you also get to see the next moment, uh, about 15k, when people are coming back through. So there's not any real point to be near Man U unless you're a big fan of football, I guess. So for this 5k split, it was 27.26, so again, just keeping it locked and noticing that although I feel bad, as in very congested and just struggling to breathe through my, through my nose, I didn't feel any worse. So I thought, as I ticked over 14k, all I've got to do is this two more times and we're done. So this is where things really pick up um, in terms of support. As you move towards Stratford, you do notice the crowds. This is where... Uh, the atmosphere really builds and you really do need that support from here on out so it's great that Stratford is so well supported and you can just focus on people's faces people saying your name you've got your name on the bib it, it was larger this year if you can see it uh, so really good to hear Mac being cheered very very fun I should also say you can see the other runners coming back and this is the 37k point for them so you can see their faces it is a worrying sight because the majority look like they've been through some stuff and you're about to be through that same stuff uh, down in Altrincham. But it's great to see them and just focus on that. Meanwhile, you're running a very straight route. So there's like 6k just straight and you can really just focus on taking off those k's as you move under the M60 where the Underground Collective are playing music. That's a, a favourite distraction attraction for most people. Uh, it's great to hear, hear the bass bumping under the M60. I will not be smiling when I come back through. Here is also where I saw my wife and my mum. They were waiting on the sidelines and I knew also that I'd see them again in about uh, two hours time when I was trying to get sub four. I'd look a whole lot worse. I would look like I've been through some stuff and I'd see them again. So it's good to see them this time looking as fresh as I could look and then know that I'd see them towards the end. 
So after the long straight down to Timpley, I ticked over the 20k mark and I did that 5k split in 27.36. So again, doing well just to maintain that pace, but I was not very happy. Um, it, it was like the worst I've ever felt at the half marathon distance. I wasn't necessarily getting worse, but I just was not enjoying having to breathe, basically. My legs were okay. The fitness was there, like my heart rate, I wasn't monitoring it, but after the fact, I've looked at it, I was fine, but I did not feel fine. Halfway, 156, 46. <laughs> Support through Timpley was great, and you can also see the runners coming back through, so they've experienced altering them, and you can see them coming through, and soon you would be joining them. So I ticked over 25k as I entered Altrincham and the 5k split was 27.47. So still on pace despite quite a bit of discomfort up here and also down there. So I was still maintaining it. Altrincham itself was absolutely superb. I respected the hill as I advised a few weeks ago and I was reassured, reassured by my reconnaissance uh, in that video. And I also met someone that had seen the video on the hill. So it was very surreal and hilarious, but there we go. Um, the course did change ever so slightly, but the hill remained. So some people in the comments of that video, they were saying, um, it's changed, it's changed, there's no hill, there's no hill. Yes, there was a hill, there was a hill. And uh, it just slightly changed, the elevation was still the same, you still had to deal with inclines. Uh, but overall, altering was such a good time if you respect it. Just respect the hill, get up and then get down. It was my slowest kilometer, but I definitely think it's worth doing that. So after Altrincham, you make your way back to Timpley, and there is a wide stretch of road, which I'm told is for an emergency landing for airplanes. But anyway, it's incredibly wide, and also there's, there's a very visual incline. It's not actually that significant, but it messes with your head. And I know a lot of people find that bit really tough because it just feels like you have to kind of slow down. But no, it is quite, quite minor in all honesty, but obviously we're there, we're ticking over, and just as I get to Timpley, we tick over 30k. <sighs> 5k split here, 28.36, so we had dropped back on the pace a little bit, and I, I kind of remember seeing 30k tick over on the watch, because that's when I had to take both a caffeine gel, uh, my sixth at this point, because I had one on the start line, thought that was a good idea, it was not a good idea, and I also had electrolytes to take, and I was not, not in the mood. I did not want to put anything inside my mouth. Wow, or horrible phrasing. But I had to do it, and I did it, and they stayed down, against all odds. So here is Brooklands. This entire stretch of Brooklands Road is 18 miles to 20 miles, which, it's the wall. The wall is a road. Brooklands Road, this is where you're, you run out of fuel, you're... Uh, your energy stores are depleted and you're very much dependent on how you've been fueling for the race so far. I was having trouble sticking to, to 530s. The cramp was starting to become a real thing and so I turned to my secret weapon. Though I've been doing strength and conditioning a lot more, I also had a, a backup plan. I had some cramp fix. That is the name. I had some cramp fix. I got it out of my pocket. It's like a gel. I squirted a bit into my mouth and it was like, I don't know if it was off, but it was like battery acid, presumably. And I, had, I immediately spat it out. Maybe I, I had a bad sample. I don't know. I tossed it and I just kind of moved forward at a, at a reduced pr pace that was not so slow as to jeopardize sub four necessarily, but so that the cramp didn't kick in. It was a very, very much a balancing act. And so just after a few a few kilometers ticked over, it started to, to subside a little bit. So the next 5k split was 29.22, and if you're going for a sub 4, that is not fast enough, Mac. As we entered sail, I looked behind me, and this is where the fun began. The 4 hour pacer was gaining on me extremely quickly. I was actually shocked, it was like Jaws approaching his next victim. Oh, this is tough. So shortly after sale, I saw my wife and mum again, and yes, I looked horrific. Um, hopefully I can include some pictures. I didn't... Uh, where's my hat gone? Where's my hat? Um, 
I would I said something. I don't know what I said. They don't know what I said. It was gibberish. And then I just plodded on. So there you go. 36k in, 37k in. Your your head is mush. Now then, there's no footage for the next bit of the race. And that's because it finally did happen. I headed back through Stratford and the four hour pacer caught up with me and also overtook me. So this pacer, Gordon, he was almost militant in his encouragement, but I really enjoyed it at that moment. It was like, tr I don't know. My brain was all over the place, but I really appreciated the kind of direct encouragement he was he was rolling out and uh, it really helped uh, it kept me there i had the mile uh, sorry the kilometers ticking down on my watch so i could i could just see it slowly very slowly ticking by but he got us there he got us to that around 40k i think he got us to and then he backed off a little bit so he'd actually bought us a little bit of time so he backed off to kind of rally to, to muster and bring some other people through hopefully to achieve that sub four so i crossed the 40k mark with a final 5k split of 28 30 so 52 seconds quicker than the previous split so i brought things back but of course, I still needed to hold them. We were only at 40k. Uh, marathon is 42.2. We ticked over 41. We ticked over 42. And then I finally saw the corner that you turn and you know it is 500 meters to go. And at that point, I was trying to work out because my watch was measuring too long. There was weaving, you know, GPS drift. And so I turned the corner 500 meters. I was thinking, am I actually going to make this? And I could not math. I could not do the math. So I just ran. Ah, 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 ah. 